do you feel better after you saw him with the flashcards? Man, I was, man, I wasn't even going to bring it up. Just to make sure. It's fucking ghetto fucking podcast. <laughs> hey, you, you do it how you got to do it. <laughs> Chopsticks. <laughs> I guess the clap's probably better than that, right? <laughs> Anyway, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, this is episode uh, number eight of Getting Blunt with Keith. Um, so uh, I think you've been acting for what, about 10 years now? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, 10 years. So you started in 2011? 2011. Mm -hmm. So what was your very first um, like gig or like what got you into it? Um, well, it's funny because my first audition out here was for a full feature and I got it, which rarely <laughs> happens. You know, but so you're like, this is easy. Yeah, I was like, dang, is this gonna happen all the time? Uh, but no, you know, I was just uh, back home. I was just, I got into modeling a little bit uh, while I was in college, um, and then um, I think I heard some extra work. It was actually about Schmidt with Jack Nicholson. Oh shit! Um, they were shooting in Lincoln, so I went and did that, and I was like, oh, this is fun, you know. Um, so when I moved out here, I thought I was gonna get into it, but you know, had Eva and was kind of focused on that for about four or five years and then um someone actually told me about the audition and i went and it was a wrap since then so so it wasn't necessarily 10 years in a row you took some time off yeah and, it, yeah. yeah it was I, I i never really got into it until 2011 you know so like i said it was just it was that one um background work that i did and then i just i didn't i really didn't do anything with it for those four or five years so that's why I count 2011 is when I really got into it. Yeah. So. Um, did your uh, scene make it in the Bouch Mid or? No, no, no. no I just, I think, but I, it was crazy. I, I was at uh, right in front of the camera where they had his tent. So I was always, wa he was always walking past me all the time. Jack but, Nicholson? Yeah. But you know, you can't say anything to oh, him. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. It's still crazy though when like you see someone that you have admired or watched their movies and shit and, and you like, they walk by you're like holy shit that's a real person mm -hmm. you it's know like, it's like a it joker makes, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. it's like makes everything more real mm -hmm. you know because um until you see it in person it just seems kind of like made it doesn't seem real you no, know what it, i mean yeah it, it doesn't you know those people are like oh they're not real they're actors like okay. when i was on the <laughs> set of um westworld um mm -hmm. I fucking just saw anthony hopkins just drive by well he had a driver but they were taking him from like you know his trailer to like another set they were shooting uh -huh. at and he, i was with a bunch of the extras and we were just like holy shit just him driving by you know what i mean right <laughs> like yeah, that guy's a fucking crazy. legend yeah. you know so um right on man uh uh do you remember like what your very first was that feature film paid was that your first paid gig too um was that paid actually i don't think it was was it no no i don't think it was it was it was with um why can't I think of his name? Was it Running Wild Films? Okay. Is uh, why can't I think? Is of it his out name? here? Yeah, it was out here. Okay. Yeah, even uh, Bill was in it. Um, yeah. Really? Yeah. Damn. That's why we always laugh. He was like, "Yeah, remember uh, you know that first film we had together?" So yeah. Can you watch that now? Is it anywhere? I, I don't think so. I haven't seen Link on it for forever. I may. I probably have it downloaded somewhere, like like Vimeo or something like that. I'm sure. Uh. Yeah, I think on Vimeo is on the other than that, I don't remember. And it might be on YouTube. But yeah, anywhere running running wild films, it'll be I don't know. <laughs> so after acting for like ten years and you know you know, I'm sure you've experienced all these different highs and lows and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any advice that you could give someone who's just starting and wanting to get into it? Um, the best advice I could give is like, if you really want to do it, don't like, you got to have tough skin and, and don't, don't give up. Cause it, you're going to get so many no's. Like, for example, you know, I, I got my first audition for a feature. I, I, I got casted. That doesn't mean I got cast for everything else after that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you start off on this high and then it's just boom, nothing. And it, it happens like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you just have to be persistent and continue to just build your resume, get experience, network. Uh, I mean, that's one thing you've been great at. Like, you know everybody, you know what I mean? So it, that'll put you ahead of anybody else as long as you're prepared, have experience, you know people, because they'll start telling you, hey, I got this, you know, 
this this role you want to go ahead and do it just based off of knowing somebody mm -hmm. yeah you know go ahead and do it um and that that that's the best way to go so just have tough skin and be persistent that's the best thing i would say i think that's fucking excellent perfect advice you know getting used to those no's first of all because mm -hmm. it's pretty much a numbers game yeah and the same thing kind of happened to me where the first year I just got all these fucking gigs in a row and I was just like, holy shit. You know, I just thought I was killing it. And then like, there's another year where I didn't get shit, right. you know? And I think that's just kind of like what it is. You just have to, if you make it through those, that year of the nose mm -hmm. and then the next year you're going to get something yeah. at some point, you know, for every like hundred no's, you might get a, a yes, you know? Exactly. So it's like just that consistency, you yeah. know? And I felt like after that, it was at least, at least once a year, something really good would happen. Yeah, at least like it, day, yeah, yeah, and it just kept it kept climbing. So you just have to be patient, like you said, just ride that wave because something. If, as long as you stay on it, something good is gonna happen. So well, I think the hardest thing for people is, um, like you say, ne you say networking, but how do you even get into it? Like how you know what I mean? Like like where do you like how do you get into the film world and say even in Arizona? You know, if you're starting out, because for me. I just luckily had a work buddy that took me on a set and mm -hmm. then I was just like, holy shit, this is a thing here. And then <laughs> from then on I was hooked. Yeah, but uh -huh. before that, dude, that was a foreign fucking world to yeah. me. I didn't ever thought that I could get involved in, in uh, filmmaking. All right. Cause well, a lot of people don't, unless realize. you like go to school in yeah, like, LA yeah. or all this shit, you know? Uh -huh. But a lot of people don't realize there's a huge community here. And I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. back what was it 2006, I just kept hearing it was going to be the next Hollywood. And I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, just, you they're know. You're still saying that? Yeah. We're gonna, they're <laughs> going to keep saying it, too. And keep saying it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I got on some student films um, and just networking and meeting people there. You know, got some friends on Facebook. And next thing I know, boom, here's all these other people who they're friends with. Uh, the Facebook groups and stuff like that. So all that, just that networking on one or two people, it just it just grew from there. Um, and then just actually just being friendly with people on set, you know, you know the crew, the cast, everybody. Because making sure you become Facebook friends with mm -hmm. all of them when you leave, because mm -hmm. that's all putting you in a whole another network of people in the industry. You know what I'm saying? So that that was the biggest thing. And just going to whatever was going on, if there was some kind of you know festival or something like that you, you just go you never know who you're going to meet what you're going to see you know what i'm saying ask questions introduce yourself you know you just really have to put yourself out there because if you don't ain't shit gonna happen <laughs> that's just yeah truth. that's um i think that's hard for a lot of people even these days you know mm -hmm. there's not like a lot of uh yeah. social interaction even with these young <laughs> these younger guys you know no, these younger it's, kids. it's, it's true it, it, and it was hard probably because covid everything was shut down you know so they're looking at you know how do i still network and how am i going to you know how can i do that i mean luckily they had some festivals online i don't think i ever watched one online but you know I've even seen it where, you know, there's been a lot of uh, live stuff on Instagram, whether they're interviewing somebody or, you know, the festivals. And I think people have found other people from that stuff, you know, and it's it's just crazy that the, once you get to meeting people and the tagging, um, you know, that's another thing. I mean, geez, like I had a guy that I, uh, that I got in this film I'm about to work on now and he's been, you know, tagging me in his stories and stuff that I put up. And then that just draws more attention to me, you know what I mean? So it's just it's it's crazy the way things work, just from from networking. But it's it is hard because I honestly I hate doing it. I hate doing all like I, I'm the networking. Yeah, the networking because yeah. it, it can be exhausting. It's a job in itself. Yeah. Networking is its own job, mm -hmm. and it's and it's almost like a, a skill too. Like some people are good at it, some people aren't. You know, like mm -hmm. um, not not just even going out in public, but just like on, your online presence. Right. You know what I mean? And um, being able to navigate the different social medias and all that shit. That's a, a whole nother That's a job. Fucking, yeah, it's very time consuming. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't even honestly be on Facebook, man, if it wasn't for um, this shit. Because there's certain jobs that I've gotten on there that have paid a lot of my fucking bills that I've only gotten on Facebook mm -hmm. in no other way. Not through my agency or anything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and, and like you said, sometimes, um, you know, someone... If they see a role that they think I'm good for, they'll just tag me in the comments right. or whatever. I'm like, oh, shit, okay, you know. Uh -huh. That's what I love about the community is how supportive everybody is, you know. Like, most most people are generally cool and, you know, 
happy when you see someone else, you know, do well. Yeah. Cause you know, just cause you're fucking eating shit and not getting anything, but you see your friends succeed. I love when I see fucking yeah. people do cool yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Like, for example, like Becky, like mm-hmm. when she's doing all that cool shit with fucking Hulu and all, I'm like, yeah, fuck. That was, that was yeah. amazing. I was so happy for her. I was like, oh, it's Becky. Yeah. I saw a commercial and I was like, yeah, that's her. Dude, she, because I, I constantly like have YouTube on. She, her ad, that ad Always comes up pops up. Every three Man. ads, dude. Yeah, she got I'm like, it. I know her every time. I'm like, I know her. I know her. <laughs> it's Becky. No, I was happy for her. But you're right. I think that's that's another part of it, too, is we worry so much about what what we're getting we're not congratulating everybody else you know what i mean like be happy for it It just that positive energy spreads you know so definitely got to give love to everybody else yeah so um do you uh like right now you're still currently like um proactive on auditions and things like that Mm -hmm. or yeah i'm picking up and shit i have been yeah it's it's been kind of crazy lately um i mean i haven't done a whole lot of auditions but it's weird i've been getting um, some roles just based off of who I know, you know, um, I got this one short cause a guy said, Oh, I know Becky and I know you worked with her before and I, I liked your work. So I got with him. Um, there was another one where, uh, the pocket man and cargo boy, um, you know, I, I know Adam, so, you know, they need to fill that, that role that I got. And he just emailed me and asked me if I wanted to do it. Um, then I'm going to be doing another one next year with uh, this guy named Poe Legged Lou. Did you ever what watch a <laughs> yeah Bo Legged Lou? That's his name. But have you ever you remember House Party? Of course. The, with Kid the, and Play. Yes, the, the three guys who were always going after Kid and Play, and the one was like, "I'm gonna kick your fucking ass." Is that guy? That's Bo Legged Lou. <laughs> yeah. So I know Tap of the Spivey. She got me in touch with the um, director who's out here. He liked my work. Got me in the film. Damn, dude. So it's just it's it's crazy. You never think when you start. You never look at how things gonna be in the future. So, I know another guy that um wrote a role for you and he actually put your name in it yeah he's an ass <laughs> no, no no like dude you i was like like fucking happy you did that too that's what i was like man i'm, I'm, I'm uh i appreciate that because um there's some nerves that come with that too because like you know as i'm writing it and then me using your name for the character like i didn't know if you're gonna enjoy it or like it mm-hmm. or you know like or if you hated it but then you feel obligated to do it just because you're <laughs> my like, friend oh, you know it, what i mean it's so, Keith shit. <laughs> yeah yeah no, nah, no. Nah, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so yeah, so there's there's like uh, cause you and just a couple other people are like the only ones that like I had in mind from the very beginning. You know what I mean? Didn't have mm-hmm. to have audition or anything like that. So I appreciate you. Nah, uh, I appreciate that in you. Yeah, like, so. I, and I loved it. Like I told you, like just reading that stuff is hilarious. It's it's funny. It's so right. funny. So oh, yeah. Yeah. right on. Um, do you have any? Um, I don't know if we talked about this last time we were on the podcast, but it's kind of like a segment I like to make clips of, but. Do you have any audition horror stories where you just like went in and it was just a complete disaster and you left oh, and just wanted man. to drive on to oncoming traffic? Oh man. <laughs> no, I get, you know what? It it was like, a, um, <laughs> it was, uh, one time, uh, I had went out with another actor, Vic Rogers. We went out to BET had like an open casting call. Um, I mean, it was like a, it had to be thousands of people here in Phoenix. No, it was, in, it was in LA at the Staples center. So, you know, I'm like, you know, I knew, I knew like everybody got a minute and that was so much more pressure, like no matter what you practice, but I had it down, you know, so we're, everybody's waiting. And, and the thing that made it so bad is we were waiting. We were waiting. We waited in line for about two hours. We got inside, they put everybody in a room. We was waiting there for like two hours. And then we actually went to the arena with the stage and that's when, man, my leg would not stop. Like I had to grab it. It was shaking so bad. And I, dude, I kid you not, I thought I was, like, just shaking as I was walking up to the stage. And I got through, ha- like, half of my monologue. And it was like, all right, thank you, bye. Man, I, I just want to You mean they said day. that halfway through? Your yes, life? they oh. give you a minute, a minute. And I, I was just like, oh, because I started getting into it. All right, thank you. That's your minute. And I was like, I waited for, like, days and then cut me off. But... Yeah, man, I, I I felt like I did bad, and maybe, I don't know if it was just my nerves or what. I, yeah, I've had that before with yeah. your legs, just like oh. that's just adrenaline, dude. Yeah, yeah, it sucked. Like I was just sweating, and my leg wouldn't. I thought I was. On so did everyone head. have the same um, monologue? No, or every, you just bring your own. You could do whatever. It people sang, people did a comedy bit. You could do whatever you wanted. To, you just had a minute. So people to do rapping. whatever. Yeah, to do whatever. So would you, you do like a monologue? Yeah, I think I, I picked a monologue from like. Denzel or something like that. Yeah, but yeah I know. I, I know. I bombed it because 
after was so day and and usually i'm not so nervous but i was completely ner- like i was done as soon as i walked in that room was it because of um just how big it was and the yeah, environment was it so, of, like the stage and shit yeah it was stage right in front like so many people and i was just like man a minute and i'm like i know this is longer than a minute but so yeah. was it like in front of a group of like judges or something or yeah and then uh, who are all these other people just random people it was like five judges it was like one lady that she, she you know she's with bet she's a casting director i think there was another known actor um it was like a panel of four, yeah four or five and then just everybody else was auditioning for them so they would put it they would take like five people at a time up on the stage so it's crazy cattle call and, and, and um what was it for like it was just they were just looking for talent, talent. That, yeah, that's all like, yeah just yeah, shows are probably producing yeah stuff. different just, just have people on their roster to see who they could fit into the shows on bet and so yeah that's all that was damn but, well, you know it was experience right yeah it, it, it yeah it was an experience <laughs> man but yeah I, that was probably one of my probably one of my worst and most nervous auditions ever have you ever been like that on set ever with nervous no oh, you know what yes when i did that top gunner with eric roberts that just like you said before like just actually seeing him like you are in everything like yeah i watch you on fucking dark like, night yeah i watch <laughs> you on tv all the time so i was just he literally is in everything by the way yeah he he is <laughs> yeah. he is yeah. in everything yeah. um but yeah i was just a little nervous because i mean i had uh i had a lot i had a big role in that film so just being in there with him and i was like man and scenes with him right uh yeah i was like i do not want to mess up you know what i mean um so i was i was a little nervous at first and then even one of the days i had like i don't know why but i had like 80 percent of my scenes all in one day and the director was like i think we knocked out like 20 of your scenes i was like Oh man, twenty? Yes, I'm not kidding. I man, I everything that whole day I was in, and with him, some other. I don't know why it. And I know it sounds like a lot, but it, it a lot of it was little too. But yeah, it was. It felt like twenty. But that's literally what he said. He was like, I think we did like twenty scenes. I was like, man, but like leaving, leaving the the trailer. Um, Eric Robertson came in. He was like, hey man, like good job. I think he knew like I was going all yeah, day yeah, but yeah. just to hear he him knew say it was on that, your plate yeah he just to hear him say that i was like i was like all right i accomplished something today <laughs> so didn't you feel <laughs> i don't know if i could say this or not i can cut it but didn't do you feel better after you saw him with the flashcards? man oh man i wasn't even gonna bring it up I, well, I, was, I think you did last time i did i, yeah. I maybe i did yeah, I, yeah, maybe yeah. i was maybe i didn't want to do it this yeah. time but no i mean i was like what the fuck i was like he's using that's it let's go that after every after everything especially that day that i You're learned like your balls off man. yeah i was like man fuck with I my flashcards <laughs> no nah, fuck the flashcards i didn't want them no more. i was like no nah, man this to get Mm-mm. i couldn't believe it i could not believe it and that was another reason why i was nervous too because it's like er, like when the camera's on here everybody had to say in a certain way so you can't block his cards everybody's all like Oh really? Yeah, because he put them all. Every, depending on what the room is like, he had them everywhere. Like two people here, a car. Two people here, a car. Like God damn it. Damn. Yeah. So he doesn't memorize nothing. Nope. Reading, reading everything. Damn. <laughs> so I had no idea, but no idea. I do that on video auditions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just put shit everywhere. I start looking at your eyes. Is fine. <laughs> Where's the car? oh there it is. <laughs> I actually seen an audition one time where you could tell somebody was like put it up on the wall and just like going like this and I was like, Oh man. Um I got like about a hundred video auditions for the sound guy and there's some Really? Just I can't believe people like I'm like, Did you watch those back before <laughs> you sent this? <laughs> like they're literally just reading like the script and like like I'm just like, What the oh, fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but I'll do like I don't know, two, three, four, sometimes five, six takes, and then I'll like watch back and pick the best one. You know what you I mean? Know what? And I it's did. always the first one. <laughs> yeah, well, see, that's what I was about to say. I was watching something <laughs> Jessica Martin was doing about it one time. She was talking about how I literally do one or two takes. And I was like, you know what? I do the same, like, I did the same thing as you did. I do like six or seven takes, but my first first or second one is always good. Yeah, so yeah. so now that's all I do. I yeah. only do two, three takes. I'm like, if I do any more, it's not going to. waste of time. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. nah, and they're going to be bad and. Yeah. yeah, you get in well, your head and shit. Well, these people, 
before you do those two takes, you at least read the script and yeah. kind of go through the motions. These people like. Well, this is like the first time they're seeing the fucking the script and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> See, now you have to you have to tell one of the uh, the one of the audition stories because I I now knew you Mine? got a lot. Yeah, for oh. uh, for um, um, yeah. I have one where uh, when I first started, I auditioned because remember I had long hair and a beard and yeah. shit. Yeah, so Jesus. Um, I. Uh, audition for the drummer of Leonard Skinner or some shit in LA. It was supposed to be some like uh like doc kind of thing they were doing. Uh -huh. And I was same thing dude when I went in there. I was so fucking nervous my leg was twitching. But not only that, my entire body was sweating oh, profusely. Yeah. My, I mean just that's like just fucking <laughs> pit stains and shit. And Already. this is all on video and I'm that's all I'm thinking about when I'm there. I'm like while they're just getting this all in video and oh, I just completely, man. and there was the same kind of thing. They're like, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And just push me out. I've had a shit ton of just really, 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 really bad auditions. But the thing is weird is there's probably been two or three times out of the thousands of auditions where I'm like, I fucking killed it. Yeah. I killed it. I never got those. Mm -hmm. And the ones where That's I'm like, funny. the ones where I'm like, man, I fuck that up. Fuck. I'll get, I'll get them. Is, you know ain't ain't I mean? that weird sure, how that yeah, works? Yeah. Um, and and I'm, I'm, there's like, there's no way in hell I'm getting that fucking, that one. And then sure shit, like two or three days later, I'm like, Got what it. the fuck? Are you kidding? <laughs> Holy shit. Like what? That's insane. So, it's crazy. Um, I've had uh, some pretty um, embarrassing moments on set though. Like, oh. especially when I first started, I was in this like music video. Wait, is that the one where we, for uh I don't, I don't know, know if we you were in one music it. video together. No, no, that was a mis That's actually when we met. Yeah. I was yeah. going to ask you about that if you remember when we first met. I did. But we didn't really talk on that set. Yeah, I think we, we just met. introduced it. Yeah, that was the Miss uh, Crystal set. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I think because of that, and then that, I think there was like a group page to drive to LA and back mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. And then we were both in LA and I needed a ride. Yeah. And I think we just, because we had met, you would give me a ride. And that's when we really were able to kind of like, you yeah. know, obviously we were forcing a car to fucking bullshit. Yeah, we got to talk. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then yeah. we ended up being on like uh, Quincinelli, you know, well, Leafy's like, after that. Mm -hmm. and shit, so that was crazy. Um, I forgot what I was talking about <laughs> right before that. I, I know. I just short term memory. Uh, <laughs> shit. Oh, audition. Oh, yeah, the set. Um, yeah. This was a music video, and, like, w there was a bunch of actors sitting around, like, a poker game, right? We're playing mm -hmm. poker and shit like that, and they're getting all these shots with this big fucking badass camera and shit, and I was like, okay, eventually the camera's going to be on me, and they're going to get my scenes and shit. So mm -hmm. they get everybody else, and they finally put the camera on me and shit. You know how long? It takes about... Yeah, this is like smaller setups, but it takes like 20 minutes just to move the fucking camera and yeah. the rig and all this shit. So finally they get, um, I'm getting all ready and shit. And right when they go, right when they roll action, dude, I fucking bumped a drink and spilled all over me, dude. Oh, and fucking, snap. oh dude, it was so embarrassing. They go cut. And then, um, I could just see the director. He's like, oh, like this. <laughs> he's like, Ugh. luckily everyone was like super nice. Like a bunch of PAs came up and they started drying me off. And luckily I didn't spill the drink. Onto the poker table, dude, because that oh, would yeah, really that fuck been, everything. Yeah. I actually spilled it like onto myself, but um, it just delayed production for like, you know, half hour. And like, you don't want to be that guy, you yeah. know what I mean? Where it, and there's like <laughs> probably a hundred people on this production and shit, you know? Sucking shit. Look at that guy. <laughs> yeah, we're already been here for like half an hour. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so time's money on that shit. Yeah. So, um, that's yeah, crazy. Um, just uh, I guess acting in general can kind of be embarrassing sometimes like especially when you're really putting yourself out there mm -hmm. you know you just kind of have to not give a fuck and just know that you're in a safe environment artistically with everybody and mm -hmm. shit you know what i mean so see that's what i'm working on because i like honestly this next project i'm doing i feel like i'm gonna have a monologue that's really going to showcase what i've done to this point i think that it, it, it really it, it it's my moment and the director was saying that like you know, when we were reading, he was like, I, I pointed it out. He was like, yeah, like you have to kill this part. Um, so that's very important to me because 10 years in acting, I want to show where I'm where I'm at, you know, where yeah. I'm going. But I have to be completely comfortable and I have to be vulnerable, you know, in this scene. Like I can't, I can't worry about what everybody else is thinking. I, I just have to let it yeah. fucking go. So that's what I'm working on at this point, because if I can do that, then I can ascend, you know, you know, my ability and what I'm doing it going further. So 
So yeah, it's it's nice when you um you, are you're working with people that you know talk to you about that and like hey you know you, you know do whatever you want here like let go yeah. you know and shit to whereas like you're getting pulled on a set and you haven't even really met everybody and you got to do yeah. these lines and shit and you're like mm -hmm. fuck how are people gonna actually react to what i'm doing and stuff especially when they call cut and they just are like uh-huh uh -huh. like what the fuck but am i, I think, doing it I all, right, that, all right we're moving on you're like what the <laughs> fuck was that good was that bad what but that's fuck? the point of i think what we all want to get to you just want to know that no matter where what? you're at or what you're doing, I'm. This is how I'm going to be. Period. Because this is what I do. It just takes a, it, it. You it it. Sometimes it takes a while to get there, but you still see it with like these veteran actors. You know the, that that's what separates the pros know? is that the ones that can kill it every single time, right. every take, no matter mm -hmm. what time they're getting pulled in or whatever. You Whatever's know? going on, they just get on set, do their job, boom, done. You know, it's because that's how it goes. I saw um, what's his name. Uh, he's in Total Recall. Uh, um, oh fuck! What is his name? Let me look him up really Arnold. quick. Arnold? No, <laughs> no, not Arnold. I need to go watch that movie again. Um, I saw this guy put on a fucking acting clinic. Me and Josh saw this guy put on an acting clinic. Um, like, but anyway, he would fucking, he would like kneel down, fucking cry like a bitch in the scene, you know, uh -huh. and then fucking. It was like about a two, three minute cry, and then they call cut, and then he'd get up completely normal, like it didn't even happen. And he was actually like directing too, kind of like he wasn't the director, be like, oh, I think we should block it like this, blah, blah, blah. And then, all right, let's do it again. Fucking went down. He did that shit probably seven or eight times, dude. Seriously? And I was like, me and Josh were like, what the fuck? He was doing it like literally right in front of us, too. Uh, Michael Ironside. You had to have seen this guy before. He's in all kinds of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That guy is a yeah. bad motherfucker. We did some cheesy, like, like, religious thing or something. I forgot what it was for, but fucking I was blown away by this guy, dude. And I was like, that's a pro fucking actor. You know what I mean? Dang. I looked him up. You know, he's been doing this shit for years. Yeah. He's in theater and all that shit. So. Oh, yeah, but that, that's theater. what I'm saying. You're saying, or that's what you're saying is we'd like to get to that point where, like, we could just fucking, you mm -hmm. know, do that shit, you know? Because even now, if I feel like I have a dramatic scene like all right y'all i'm doing this once that's it you know and then after that, i know drain and done so I know. you know what i always hear a lot of like the veteran actors say especially for like big crying scenes is that, like you know you get yourself to a place and they tell you your scene's going to be at 9 a.m and you're all ready and shit and then like oh actually we're moving it to like 3 4 p.m you know oh, and you're like what the fuck dang. and you're not doing it till like 8 p.m and by then you know you're fucking drained and shit and it's like it's hard to get to that place, you know uh -huh. what I mean? To to especially when you're crying and stuff. Yeah. Like, are you able to do that? No, but like I'm trying to figure out what gets me there. So like in this, you know, I was talking to the director the other day. I was like, hey, can I change just a couple words because um, there's something that triggers me. So he's do do he's like do whatever you need to do, you know what I mean? Because like in the scene, it's you know like my mom passed away five years ago. So there's a couple of things we're talking about my mom. So it's two things that if I if I You're think about, about in real life, yeah, real yeah, life. Yeah. So, but we're, yeah, in real life, my mom passed yeah, away yeah. five years ago. But in the scene, I'm actually you know having a conversation with my dad about my mom who had just passed. So I was like, if I use these two words, one of them is gonna trigger me. I already yeah. know it. So you know, I guess you whatever works for you, you have to figure out what it is. And I think that's what I'm trying. I'm gonna try that because I think it's gonna. He's gonna pull it out. What so. a fucked up job. <laughs> <laughs> you get a fucking cry and shit. You get to his place. Man, like, what the fuck? No. Like, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> just cry. <laughs> I'm an actor. It is what it is. But, yeah, you gotta love it. Yeah, gotta dude. Um, do you, you don't have to say, like, how much or anything, but, like, do you, what was your, like, highest paying gig that you've ever had? I think the Four Peaks Brewery thing. Yeah, I it was like one, it? Uh, it was it was just I barely did anything, man. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, I you don't barely. Do shit for it, I mean, yeah. I was on set for two days. Lunch was amazing. It was fun. <laughs> when I got done, the dude gave me like two pack of beers that I liked. It, I mean, but it was like fifteen hundred. Yeah, you know, I did yeah, a. Yeah, I love that shit. When I think when I picked you up, I did a voiceover for a thousand, mm. and you know, so it's, that. so yeah, so so I'm trying to get that. So how many, 
free gigs compared to paid did you think oh my gosh like what 100 to a few 100 to one <laughs> probably no there's you, you mean you i'm know. not shitting on it because i'm i'm guilty of it too yeah like i guess what my point is is you get these high paying gigs but but it all evens out because you know the networking doing the free gigs mm -hmm. and i know there's a lot of actors you know who at some point they're like oh i don't do free shit or extra shit anymore yeah. and um and, and they'll only do like, are my rates 150 no matter what, or I won't do it and shit. Yeah. But I feel like they hurt themselves because, dude, I've gotten so many jobs off of just free shit. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And some of the highest paying ones just of doing something that I did for free. And then, yeah. then I meet someone there because exactly. I'm networking and then they fucking. So I don't know. I don't know. What do you feel like being 10 years in? Like, do you? Do you I agree. Yourself? But because because certain things, certain things I won't do. I mean, yeah. Yeah. At this point, I want to do some stuff for free but then again i gotta look at the situation like my biggest thing too is looking at the role so, or opportunity yeah, yeah what's the opportunity yeah. who's doing it you know what was the cinematic value how does their work look is this gonna benefit me you know like like and honestly and i say this too like um you know i was trying to audition for hellhound with with robert you know what i mean i thought i was going out for one of the the main roles um then i didn't get it then each role kept being lesser and lesser and I was just like, you know, we just it, the com the communication just stopped, you know, and, and and nothing bad about him. Like, I hope the film is going well. But, you know, sometimes you have it in your head when you're stuck with what you want, you know, whether it, it's pay or if it's a, a particular role. Like, you know, and I know a lot of people watch this film, so I probably should have just agreed to one of the roles. But it, at the time, it was just like, you know, I, I don't want a little little dinky role. Yeah, you know? yeah, I mean, yeah. That yeah. Just, and I, not to say a little dinky role, but I, I just wanted a more prominent role. No, yeah, like, that's I what that, I was yeah. going after. Um, and sometimes that outweighs if you're getting paid or not. Totally. You know what I mean, so I don't fault these guys for, yeah. for doing that, by the way. I mean, no. I'm just saying personally, I, I don't like you're, but you're right. There's kind of like a fine line. You just have to mm. find as far as, um, you know, the opportunity, I guess. Right. Yeah. And, and like I said, it, it, it happens. It is what it is. Like I said, it, like, for example, anything you do, if you ask me, you don't have to pay me shit. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm there. You know what I mean? Okay. I appreciate My, that. uh, you know, the guy I'm, I'm set my second film with him he's a good friend of me he's like older brother whatever he does is amazing and we did uh i don't know if you watched it, but it was the mother's day that i put out this this summer I mean it was just me and him and, and it was it was amazing and he has a big following from his um you know that's out community. i knew you were doing that i didn't know you could watch it yeah it's okay. that's out um it's, it's on youtube it's also on i put the i put it on my instagram too okay so sure, i'll so. put links up on, on the description on this shit yeah too. oh yeah um so yeah anything he does i'm with it because he just, just does right i mean amazing stuff you just, so yeah because you just want to do fun yeah, cool shit and yeah. work with fun people and shit mm -hmm. yeah 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 and then not even just that but ta you're talented he's talented you got a following you know what i'm saying so it's more than just getting paid you know what i'm saying it's 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 getting yourself with people who are actually doing something and have the same mindset and drive as you do totally so yeah i'm so just yeah. i think got to a point where um I, i'm just like sick of being in other people's shit mm, mm -hmm. and then i realized that like me and like my friends and the people i know are some of the funniest motherfuckers that i know mm -hmm. so why not just start like kind of like creating my our own content you know what i mean and i and um i've been really like anal about like the team that i was putting together for the sound guy and shit but i really feel like i put like just this awesome group of people that like we can build on that like we could just make all kinds of shit from here on out mm -hmm. you know i mean not even just the sound guy like um eventually when me and scott get our own camera dude like so we can do like skits like skits comedy and all, all that right. kind of shit fucking you know um commercials but, just anything yeah but see that's a testament to to know where you started and what you did your networking you're meeting people i mean that so many times we talked and you was like man i was looking up this i was researching this i was doing that the, just the time you put in and doing everything got the right people together and and look look at it i mean the, the shit's amazing it it really is and i'm not just saying that no, so, i appreciate that plus you know like since you um got to see me from like back in the day like because mm -hmm. we've been you know it's been a you, while you, like <laughs> you met i met you like right when i started pretty mm -hmm. much yeah so it's that's what i'm saying see you from now it's like this this man is awesome he's doing this shit so. yeah man thank you i really appreciate that that's uh means a lot right now um do you have a agency right now no not right now. Are you looking for one or just like? Yeah, I oh, mean, I I made a big mistake. <laughs> Why? Well, because <laughs> it, dude, uh, it it's, happens. You need some. Sometimes you need something to like kind of kick you in the ass. I don't care if you're first starting or 
you know, been with it for a while. I uh, there was um this agency, this this talent agent that was looking for people, and she's posting on Instagram. I've been following her for for years, and I seen that she gets people work, and she's in LA. I was like, all right. Um, so she was looking for some people. So I I messaged her, and she messaged me back. We were communicating, um, emailed her my information. <sighs> Number one rule of acting: always make sure your shit is updated. <laughs> Uh -oh. So she hit me back with some construct criticism. I was like, hey, you know, um, it shows you're still with 5J management. Um, you got to make sure your 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 reel is a little bit tighter and stuff, some other stuff. And I was like, oh, fucked up because I didn't I didn't go to Actors Access and, and my resume. I didn't take them off. I thought that they were going to take themselves off anyway, but I should have looked. So I still it looks like I'm still with them. Plus, they were on my resume um and you know i've had some of my footage has been from the last two years so i you know and i've learned that for your reel it needs to be like <clears throat> extremely short like extremely short like what like a minute or two Bare, like well each scene needs to like can't be any more than like six seven seconds honestly you know what i'm saying now unless it's something really good so like a and, minute of like a bunch of six seven yes clips. and it's and <clears throat> barely a minute and it should be only you it should be only you Okay, let's talk about this for a second because there's a lot of confusement, I believe, on the, in yeah. the real. Because I've been told so many different things. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. whether you should have like a, a like a commercial reel, you know, separate from your film and television episodic shit. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard one minute. I've heard two minutes. I've heard two and a half minutes. You know what I mean? So I, so you're saying a minute? So just for a simple acting reel. It could be even shorter than that because one thing I think about: Are they gonna sit there and look, really look at a whole minute? No, they're not. Everyone going has to. TikTok uh, time span, which is like fifteen seconds. So right, you gotta catch them. You right have away. to catch them right. So think: If you have fifteen, three clips, five seconds, just you. It's all you. That is honestly all you really need. Yeah, but the you hardest part is getting the clips. Right, it's <laughs> getting the clips, but. That's and that's another reason why I mean when you do a project you have to look and see I it's like I want lines. I want oh, lines. Oh for sure, yeah. So every like so you can put it in your reel. Exactly. Yeah. So like now, you know, I've done about four or five projects this since September, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna take all that and make a new reel in January. And actually, you know, I was I asked uh I asked Chad if he could put my new one together for me. Nice, oh yeah. So but that but that's what I mean, it's just, you know, with that and updating that and then getting some new headshots i'll be straight it's just it i needed to upgrade you know as as years goes by you always have to do new, new stuff get new material and all my stuff was not updated so i messed up and so they just yeah she was like she was like it, she was like just you know message me you know get everything together and make sure to you know email me back when you get stuff together i may not i may or may not be looking for new people but uh, but I am going to email her, you know, um, I mean, I updated what I could, but I'm still waiting on the, I got to wait till I finish some more projects and, and get that done. But that's what I needed that kick in the ass, man. You know what I mean? And that's the point too. what will, no matter what you do, you hit a point to where you construct criticism. It's like, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to fix it? Or are you going to cry? Like, little yeah, bitch? be a little bitch. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. Yeah, it's very important to update your shit every six months to mm -hmm. a year. It it's is. a pain in the ass with the headshots and shit. But yeah. um, I always see there's different photography photographers out. Like every like every, somebody gets hot for a minute and everybody goes to them. Shout out like, to Terry Whitehurst. Uh, she fucking um, if you go see her, she'll hook you up. Terry, okay, yeah, she's yeah. fucking super nice. And I think a lot of people were Scott lately. I've seen too. It's crazy. There's a lot of them out. A lot of good ones out, out there. Out. Oh. Just Terry. Just okay. Terry. <laughs> I was like, I'm just talking okay. with Hey, I have to talk to Terry though, so, you know. But, but yeah, man, it's that updating shit. Um, let's see here. Do you? Uh, I think we talked about this before, but we can go over it again real quick. Uh, do you have a certain process for memorizing lines? Um, me, I just like to. I really like to read the script first. Because I think reading the script lets you know who your character is and what's going on, um, who he is, who he has relationships with, how those relationships are, you know, how he connects with those people, if he doesn't like them, what's it, you know, it, it's just, it's knowing your character is the main thing for me. 
Um, and then once I heard the script, you know, I go through just those scenes um, and figure out the scene and how I'm going to act in it. I make sure I have I know the tone and everything. I just go over the line. I just read them. And then it gets to a point to where I'm just reading. I might read the other person's lines so that I could like kind of doing it with myself so that I know what my lines are. I read theirs and just say mine without looking at it, you know, and then that's why I like rehearsals, too, because I think it's it happened ever since theater. If I'm if I rehearse something about four or five times, they start it's I'm off book. It starts coming to me easily. Um, and that that's why I really like doing rehearsals, too, because, yeah, that that theater aspect helped me out a lot. I think um, fucking rehearsals are crucial. Yes, I think so too. Very crucial. And I mean, yeah, you know, you get to a point to where you know you get on on set and do your thing, but there's nothing better than connecting with the people that you're acting with. Like not because you you can tell the difference sometimes. You really oh can. totally. Oh yeah, when you're <laughs> acting with somebody and there's mm, connection. No or connection not. at yeah. all. Oh, you can tell sure. that. Oh yeah. So so yeah. Well, rehearsals are also important for just to get everyone to hang out mm -hmm. and the camaraderie and all that bullshit. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that so many times, and it's. <clears throat> I feel like it made it's made the film a lot better. Just like me and you working together, people was like, "Oh my god!" Like they they work great together. But yeah, we're cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We had so many conversations, and it's yeah. It you come over here and we talk about it. And yeah, shit. you know what I mean. So it, you know, so that that shows. Another thing is like um, certain moments can be found. Like uh, Cliff was uh, thanking me for the sound guy rehearsal because he's like, "Dude, thank you, man. No one does this." Is like. I was able to find moments here that I probably wouldn't be able to find that day mm -hmm. that I can to carry into there. You know what I mean? Right. So it gives, it gives everyone a chance and a time to fail, which is fine because you're trying stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of like doing it the day of when you're fucking rolling the cameras and mm -hmm. shit, you know? So, um, I think fucking <clears throat> rehearsals are, are very important. Yeah, no, they are. I love them. And as a director, you probably have to love them too. Oh, for sure. So. Yeah. There's nothing I realize more fun to me than, um, like getting a group of people and then trying to execute a scene that you wrote, but not only are they executing it, but they're all adding things that you never fucking thought of. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, Holy shit, that's great. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's, you know, that's happened a lot, dude. Not only in the sound guy, but on late fees and shit, you mm -hmm. know, like remember when we did the, the bike scene, the motorcycle scene. Oh yeah, <laughs> all those fucking guys out in those one man. And shit. That was crazy. Like, no, that wasn't in the script. We could have never planned for that. Yeah, you know, that shit's perfect. hilarious. So yeah, <laughs> um, that's crazy. Here. I got a bunch more. I got a few more questions here, and then uh, we'll go to the uh, Patreon shit. Um, so do you have any um, uh, goals uh, as an actor right now? Like, do you have like a main goal? Um. I just think right now, man, I'm really, I think being in it for so long, I'm just really, I have a goal of once I get, you know, all my stuff updated, I want to really get a talent agent that, that believes that I could, I could be a full-time working actor and not just get me and say, oh, you have talent. No, like I can see you weak. I can see you being a list actor. I can see the projects that I want to get you into. I, I see you being there. Like, and that's what I want. So that's my next goal because <clears throat> like I said, it's not a game anymore. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I've been treating it like full-time job for 10 years. So I, I want this to be my full-time job. You know, and that, that's the next goal for me. So You'll get there, man. Like you said, to stay consistent. Man. Yeah. That's a little fucking better shit. <laughs> you, that's, oh, dude, man. the great thing about acting is like you could – be successful at, and start at any age. Mm -hmm. And some of the best actors didn't even start until they were in their fucking 40s, right, dude. Man. Like fucking Samuel Jackson. Yeah. Um, I think Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. Yeah. Like a fucking a lot of them, dude. And wasn't it... Uh, like, why can't I think of his name? It's just... So, it's so many that you wouldn't even... There's so many. Yeah. There are so many actors you would not believe that didn't even... Some of them not, didn't start until their 50s, 60s, or even 70s mm -hmm. and shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like when people say... If I don't make it in two years, I'm going to quit. You never cared about this shit in the first place then, motherfucker, because I'm never going to quit because I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, I actually have fun enjoying it too. Like, it's like I have, even when we're doing like these, this free shit and we're sweating yeah. our balls off or doing whatever, at the end of the day, I'm like, that was fun as fuck. Hanging mm -hmm. out with everybody, being creative, you know what I mean? So yeah. like, um, yeah, I have, I'm, I'm not like in any rush or even trying to make it. I'm just trying to fucking have fun and make um, creative content and get paid for it. Right. You know what I mean? Like it would be cool just to get paid, mm -hmm. you know, and just, this is our job just to go and make be. fucking goofy shit. You know, that's why I always say that if I could, like, if I could get paid to do my regular job, I would do this and I'd be fine. You know, like I honestly, because 
I would enjoy what I'm doing. You know, it it make life that much easier. Or like you know, could you imagine being on a show like, um, you know, that's like ten season in, oh, one season, man. and they're like really tight with the cast and shit, and like one of the dudes left season three, but you're still talking to him and mm -hmm. shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we still cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. I don't know. That just seems like the most fun. Like, like you don't even have to rehearse because y'all good. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like how it got with late fees at some point. It it's, did. We, yeah, that's how it was. It's it was like, like a sitcom. Again? Yep. It's like a show or something. I feel like it's still is. <laughs> Are we about to go on three years now? <laughs> I think it's like four, dude. Something, whatever it is. It's, but yeah, I, yeah, that's exactly how it feels. You know, it's it's crazy. It's it's fun. It is it's it's really fun though. So when you're not um in movies or shows, um, are you watching a lot of content like f or films and episodic television? <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, I love uh, episodic films. I I love them. But so, so you like you watch episodic more than more than movies? <sighs> you know what? No, I guess it got I I guess it got to be this. It, no, they're about the Equal. same. Yeah, they're equal. So you got like all the streaming shit, and you just watch everything. I I try to watch it for free. <laughs> oh, those one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah one of yeah, those. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. man. Yeah, you got to turn. No, I mean I got. Now. Yeah, I, I mean I got you know Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff, but yeah, right. it's just been. <laughs> dude, I do. I, I just named those three. That's it. <laughs> just like um, I just got finished watching C. Oh man, that shit is amazing. It's on Apple. I didn't watch on Apple. See, I don't have at the just Apple the TV. letter C here. No, S-E-E, -E -E. -E -E. like C. Okay. With Jason Momoa. Okay. Amazing. You know, I was just saying I finished watching C. I mean, you. It was good. Um, Titans. But I'm still huge into Marvel, man. I, we're going to see Eternals Friday. Like, I got to see every single thing. Every Is single that Marvel. your main shit? I, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's my main shit right there. Me and my daughter. That's what we do all the time. That's cool, though. Yeah, you know. You yeah. need to share that with your daughter. Oh, she's, I feel like she's into it more than me. She, she'll she go back and watch stuff and be like, Dad, remember when such and such happened? This is, I'm like, oh, shit, kid. And I was like, dang, like, okay, you know. I do give them props for just how they are able to create such a connecting world, you mm, know. The continuity. Like, not, yeah, oh, the continuity, man. even with the B stories and all that shit. Mm -hmm. It's pretty impressive. It is. That's why I like, because I was like, it's just like watching soap operas. Soap operas. You know it's what I'm saying? Soap it, yeah, dude, let's be real. exactly. If, I, hey, I don't care. You, I like it. Um, I was gonna say about that. Uh, so, do you even give a shit about DC? <sighs> DC to me, DC's fucked. But <laughs> I'm, I mean, come on, because I don't understand what they. I mean, they've had 27 Batman's. <laughs> you know, I don't know who's Joker. I don't. You know, it's just so many things have changed. You don't know what what they're going to do. You know when we're I mean? talking about Marvel and DC, you're just talking about the films, or you're talking about the comics also. Okay. Do you read comics? I don't. I don't read comics anymore. Um, but I'm just watching the films. Okay. And I know there's so many storylines to go from, but I just feel like I feel like um, they after after um, what was that Justice League? Like they don't know where they're going. Let me be dead honest. They're better. They fucked if, that up. Yeah, dude. They they were trying to play catch up and and set it and did the justice like they should have just did the individual shit first like Marvel I, did you know what I mean mm -hmm. and right now it'd be all caught up by now yeah they should have been all caught up because I mean like Superman was really good that that was like t it was really really oh good. the yeah the the original yeah. was, what was Zack Snyder one yeah yeah like that Man of Steel good. yeah Man of Steel yeah, was I like good that one too. I liked the first Wonder Woman. It was really good. Second one, I don't know I heard, what. The, I, I heard that's garbage. I don't, I don't know, know what that. they were like. The end. I don't know what they were trying to do with it. Honestly, like I don't know. I Man of Steel was just such a huge improvement from that last super dog Dude, shit movie that they I'm, did, where he didn't even I throw one that punch. Super dog shit. <laughs> Dude, that he was did fucking, it, did he? He didn't throw one fucking punch. That was um that uh, Brian Singer guy that did Man. all the X Men and shit. That he shit was fucking garbage. touching little kids and shit. Oh, oh about no, that. yeah, he's a sick fuck. Another one. Oh, yeah, he's a sick fuck. Um, did you hear about um, mm. the new Superman mm -mm. in the comics? No. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. It uh, don't. I let me not say nothing because I don't want to get canceled. I don't, I don't have nothing to say. Revis Dorsey's been canceled. Done. Goodbye, bitch. Why can't we have opinions about it? Oh, we can. I was just talking shit. No, I. Man, it just needs to stop. I mean. I, I know that's real life and I'm not I'm not homophobic. I'm not a, like do what you like do what you want to do. But do we have to have it in every single 
every single thing you ha they have to integrate it in there it's like come on we still we still barely get the token black guy sometimes it's obviously but, forced right yeah it well yeah that's the other thing too it's forced like we have on. a mutual friend i'll tell you <laughs> afterwards who's gay who says the same exact shit like they're oh, they're using man. our shit to sell comics you know i, I, mean? I think so, i've heard some i've heard you know some um you know some of the 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 why i just lost my my train of thought homosexuals say that like yeah they, they say yeah this is they're actually going too far you know i, I had uh, a couple of years ago i haven't i have a good friend he's homosexual he's in new mexico and you know, I had a conversation with him about a lot of stuff, and he was agreeing with some of the stuff I was saying. I'm like, wow, I was shocked. But you know who are the people that <clears throat> fucking give a shit about that stuff? Are fucking 40 year old white males and females and shit. Because you know what's funny? McClay has shared, McClay has a, um, a very popular YouTube channel where they flip, they talk about hot comics and, you know, yeah, and right, flip shit yeah. and all this. I mean, they get like five, 6,000 viewers, you know, mm -hmm. live every time. And um, they were talking about this and he was sharing um, the opinions that we have. And the one dude that w one of the dudes fucking called McClay homophobic and then start told McClay that he um, maybe he's has a uh, questions about his own sexuality on this podcast. You can watch this shit now. And um, and then and, and he was like just p totally like shitting on McClay. McClay's like, I'm not homophobic. Like, why the fuck are you twisting this? Don't get it twisted. And yeah. shit. I'm just saying like, they're forcing the stuff on us. Like what the fuck? And it's just this 40 year old white nerdy dude. It's like, why do you care? Do you even know anyone that's gay? Like what the fuck? Like, I don't know. It should drive me. It should drive me nuts, just dude. Stupid. I, I, it's, it's, it's getting beyond ridiculous. And it's, especially with the whole, with the whole Dave Chappelle thing and not uh, put aside, I'm a huge Dave Chappelle fan. Put put that aside. You go and watch his watch the special. If you listen to his last story and what he said, how are you still There's trying a to message. cancel him? Thank I know. you. There, he has a message and he wraps it with a perfect bow of like, yeah, exactly. You know what it reminds me? Do you know what that proves is that they didn't watch it? Yes. That's exactly what that proves. It does, for one. And it's like you you see these uh little TikToks and videos where they show they're like a kid. They set some candy in front of them. Don't touch it until I get back. They didn't pay attention to what the damn parent said. The that's two brothers? How, yeah. That, that shit is so fun. I'm it's telling hilarious. my girlfriend about and they look at each other. Yeah, they're like, like, yeah, yeah we're going to oh, do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, that, I love but that. But that's how they're acting like kids. They ain't paying attention to nothing. They're no. going to do what they want. They, they don't listen. It, Dude, I, I don't did know, you I don't see the um, video of the, um, the Netflix walkout? I didn't watch the video. So... It was literally like 30 people, but the Twitter oh made it gosh. seem like it was the biggest thing in the world. But the funniest shit in the world, I wish I had the laptop up so I could show you, but the funniest shit in the world is there was guys down there with signs that said, I like Dave on one side and on the other side it said, jokes are funny. And the guy's just going down there. He's like, jokes oh. are funny. <laughs> jokes are funny. Oh, man. And I'm they fucking surround him, bro. And they take his sign and they take the jokes are funny part off. So he's just holding the stick. And are then they serious? and then they start going, he has a weapon. He, he's like, what the fuck? And then they take his stick or actually he throws the stick and they all just surround him. And then like one of them's like, like just shaking like this, like drum in front of his head. And like, she's going, repent, repent, repent. He's just going, I like Dave. Jokes are funny. What? Jokes are funny. It's the funniest dude I've ever seen. Because oh like. he's right. Yeah. Jokes are funny it's you have a choice yes you have a choice to watch it or not there there's some comedians that i don't like their jokes i don't watch them exactly exactly i don't watch them oh man it's ridiculous and uh, uh, so you know what dave uh, chappelle is the hero we need right now dude you, you know? know what honestly he's... like he is and the fact that like well for at first netflix backed him up but then they fucking kind of like backpedaled a little bit but they, they fucking they money. i think they just offer him another 24 million dollars for another series of really? specials or maybe just even one special right. so well let's see that's the thing when it comes to money people will react because they don't want to lose their money they 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 don't go the moral route they go the rich route and then if you look up the history of the person that was running the um uh that netflix walkout um, horrible person like just a piece of shit like I saw a video of like just all the crazy things this person did and you're like what all the right. fuck <laughs> that's the, but that then that's another thing people they always want to try to go after who they see is doing something oh Dave Chappelle oh you oh you but you're really not paying attention like look at go back and look at um, you know go back you got kids 
Look at the name of the school where your kids are going to. Look into that history. Where are you working at? Do you know who your supervisor is? Do you know who is in control of that company? Do you know who that person really is? They're probably somebody worse than this person you're trying to cancel. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just oh, like yeah, yeah. My, uh, my daughter, she goes to school in Tempe. They they had a <clears throat> they sent an email and they said, uh, we're changing the name of this school because his history, he was a part of the KKK. What? Hey, that's a good job. No, it's, it's a good job. But what I'm no, saying, no, I'm is not like, saying like what, like why they're changing. I'm like, I, like why would they name some school that's, off a guy? Named there's a Kirk? lot of there's a lot of stuff that we probably don't realize that you don't realize. Yeah. Like if you that, look, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And uh, you know, like I saw some lady was commenting. And it was like, don't change history. It was like, no. How can we grow if we don't fix our negative history? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Period. But that's that. That's within the same thing. You're going after somebody, but you're not paying attention to who the people are who are above you, who you're doing stuff for. You know, focus on that. Yeah, a lot of those people are just behind the shadows too. You don't ever yeah. see them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. It is, but cancel culture. Um, well, we're gonna get canceled. I, dude, I have so much <laughs> shit on like, my YouTube channel that I could get canceled for. I'm just waiting. Okay. But you know what I realized? It's actually good to get canceled because you actually get more famous. Attention. So there's a um, show that I watch every Monday night with my girlfriend called Kill Tony. It's like a a, st- a live show that they do where they have stand ups come up and they do a minute. And then after the minute, they, they usually suck or they're like really good, but then they'll like rip on them and shit like that. Yeah. Um, the main host um, made some like uh, uh, Asian remarks or something at a comedy show and fucking they tried canceling him and shit like that. And all it did was make him more famous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, the, and, and so like because I've been watching his channel you know, for fucking years and literally the viewership has like quadrupled in time. And he talks about it all the time. He's like, get canceled. It'll make you famous. Uh, like that's his thing. And he's right. Dang. You know what I mean? Like if you like, uh, there's certain people you just can't cancel. Like for example, I don't know if you notice this. Or I don't know if you go on Twitter a lot, but like fucking at least once a month, they try to cancel Joe Rogan, which that's yeah. never going to happen. You know what I mean? Like they, they always try to cancel him. Yeah. They try to cancel um, Joey Diaz, a, a comedian i like he puts out a video like i don't give a fuck like you know what i mean like try to cancel me so it's it's really short-lived you know what i mean like it probably sucks while it happens but in the long run it's gonna probably help, help you just like i was just thinking right now when you're saying that all this stuff people are getting about you know will and jada but what people don't realize will got a book coming out just giving him more attention I don't know if yeah, that's his, planned. His, his, They're yeah. not stupid. Yeah, They're his not PR stupid. fucking yeah, it went guy through the Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, so I mean that that's why I do it because it still brings attention. Even bad publicity is good publicity, yes. and that's so so true. Mm-hmm. And it's not like he was just saying some racist shit. Um, it's like a thing when a comedian introduces another comedian, they say the most fucked up shit they can <laughs> to each other. And he thought he was cool with this uh, one comedian, and it got filmed and shit. And they only took like eight seconds oh, out of like an part. entire thing. Mm-hmm. But if you see like the rest of the set and the, what it was in contest, it wasn't even like, uh, th- it's like a thing, you know what I mean? That well, they've people always won't done. Pay, people won't pay attention to that. They, they won't t- pay attention to that. Yeah. So but yeah, it just like made a show way more popular. Anyway, I got to uh, piss like a motherfucker. We could do uh, the special Patreon shit if that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, do you want to uh, say like, uh, you know, like your social media and all that shit? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I mean, you can find me on Facebook, Revis Dorsey, but I'm mainly on Instagram under the same thing, Revis Dorsey, R E A V I S D O R S E Y. Um, so I post a lot there too. So sweet man, but yeah. All right, man. I appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, like I said, just stick around, or actually check out our Patreon.com/slash/TheBodcast for exclusive content, including this uh, next uh, 15 minutes we're about to do with Revis. So thanks for watching. Yeah. Getting blunt with Keith. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm.